The 2020 presidential race has one of the most diverse group of candidates ever. Even the designs of campaign materials have more variety. A new Axios report called 2020 Campaigns Get Colorful highlights the way candidates' logos and websites are branching out from the typical red, white, and blue. Right, so Sarah Fisher is a media reporter for Axios, joins us now. I found your article fascinating. Yeah, I read the title and I thought, oh, you were talking about the people. Yes, we've been talking about the diversity of candidates. And then as I got into it, I was like, no, she's actually talking about the color choices. So explain the trends that you're seeing. What's been, you know, a typical campaign color combination versus what we're seeing now? Well, it's exactly as you would expect. A typical campaign color combination is red, white, and blue, and it typically includes darker blues. Those tend to perform really well, especially when you want to create campaign materials around things like T-shirts. But this campaign cycle, with so many candidates against each other in the Democratic primary, I think candidates need to stand out. And so what you're seeing is campaigns are branching out with really bold colors. You see Beto on the screen there, black and white, super bold, Kristen Gillibrand, Mary and Williamson, they are experimenting with bright pinks. And then you have people like Mayor Pete Buttigieg, who are experimenting with yellows and oranges. And really, this is all about just finding a way to stand out. So it's interesting to me, because I look at some of those uh, uh, logos that we just put up on the screen there, and uh, the one that struck me as the most traditional is the Joe Biden one, right? Is that Joe Biden's on the yeah. bottom right there? Joe. Um, so what, what is he not getting that the others are? <laughs> Yeah, well, I talked to some experts in the field, Michael Beirut, who famously created the Hillary H. in 2016. And what he said is that younger candidates who are really involved in digital, not that Bernie and Joe are not, but younger candidates understand that you need to create a dynamic uh, campaign that can be used for a variety of digital platforms, whether that's testing out different versions of Facebook ads or social media posts. And so they're more likely to create a diverse palette. In fact, Mayor Pete Buttigieg kind of really took the plunge and created a design toolkit in which supporters can go on his website and pick and choose a bunch of different colors and fonts and logos to create their own T-shirts. That's something that really never has been done before. But you're right, Joe Biden, Bernie, and a few other candidates sticking to very traditional lettering and traditional red, white, and blue is sort of ironic, given the fact that, you know, they were not brought through this campaign and through their political careers in a very digital-savvy era. And a lot of candidates keeping red, white, and blue, but then folding in new colors, too, which you point out. And sometimes it's a reflection of their policy, like if they're pushing climate change, it might be green. Really, really fascinating. But you also spoke to graphic designers and creative, creative directors that have nothing to do with the campaign. So they're just assessing these logos just based on their knowledge of what sells. Um, what did you hear from them? Yeah, so the policy tie-in is fascinating. For candidates like Jay Inslee, having green at the forefront of your logo really drives home that message that you are invested in energy and environment. Amy Klobuchar, same thing. Um, the other thing that they said that was super interesting to me, though, is that this could backfire in some ways. If you go too bold, you could risk being perceived as being not professional. And so candidates have to find a way to both stand out, but include a sort of homage to some of the traditional colors. That way, they can balance being both new and sort of interesting, but also traditional and respected of the higher office. And so you see candidates like Kamala Harris waving in reds and yellows, which is actually sort of a homage to the first African-American woman who ran for president, had those colors. But she's maintaining some of the traditional red, white, and blues as well. So you have to kind of find that right balance, the design experts say. Yeah, check out Sarah Fisher's article, because yeah, the th if, you're, if you're, like, so bogged down by the political talk, I think you're going to find this article really fascinating. It's really fascinating, because it's so interesting that graphic artists are so focused on that, and that really has an effect. I mean, I was looking at the Obama logo, which was a traditional red, white, and blue with the O, yeah. but the one that everybody remains is Stephen, reminds, remembers is Stephen Ferry's Hope poster, yes. which was so iconic. Yeah. Um, so, really interesting stuff. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you so much.